So welcome everybody. My name is Jessie Lane Lee and I am a holistic nutritionist, cookbook author and cooking class instructor. And tonight I'm going to show you how to make my roasted pumpkin soup. But we're making a few modifications. First thing, it's the winter time and you can't get pumpkins. So I'm going to use butternut squash instead because it is still delicious, has a lot of the same nutrients and I love it. So we're going to do butternut squash. Second thing is if we actually roast everything, we're going to be here for ages because it takes way too long. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to chop it all up and throw it right into the pot to save time. All right, are you guys ready to get cooking? I am so excited. Soups are one of my most favorite things to make in the winter because when it's cold out and it's dark and it's snowy, it's really nice to have something that warms you up from the inside out. So to get started, we're going to start by cutting this delicious butternut squash. Now sometimes these can be hard to cut. I have a nice little one here. It's a nice little organic guy. So it's going to be a lot easier to do. So I'm going to switch my screen so you can see my hands and see what I'm doing. You also have the recipe on the screen as well. And if you don't have this recipe yet, then you can scroll down below this video. There'll be a link to where you can get the recipe. It's on page 10 of my ebook, Healing Herbs and Spices. So to get started, I'm just going to cut off the ends because those are kind of like the tough parts here. And we'll just put them aside and I'll switch and cut off the, the butt. <laughs> I call it the butt. And perfect. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful this color is. I love it. Then once you've done that, you want to peel it. I find it's easiest to peel with a knife, but some people like to peel it with a peeler, but I find it's a little bit tough. The skin can be quite rough and then also sometimes they like put wax on it. So I like to do it this way. Some people cut it in half first, but I find the cutting in half part is like the really hard part of cutting a squash. So if you can take off the skin first, it'll cut in half a lot easier. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm just running my knife along the edge and I'm trying to only get this, the like tough, thick crust skin, that would be the name, the skin, because I don't want to lose too much of like the good stuff inside. So I'm trying as hard as I can not to get too much of the good stuff, but inevitably some of it's going to come out. And then I'm just throwing all these pieces, actually I'll leave them for now, I'm going to just throw them into the compost because they are very good to compost. Sometimes you get stuck on these ridges, that can be a little bit annoying. Like I lost a good chunk in that one, but that's okay. If you have a big butternut squash, this is gonna be a bigger job. For this recipe, I'm using a small one because normally I use one of those really cute uh, sugar pumpkins. I really like those ones because they're sweet and they're quite tender as well. When you get into the really big pumpkins, they tend to get kind of like, I don't know, they're really like, not tender. <laughs> what is the opposite of tender? I don't know. Not really coarse, but uh, thick and not as good. And I really like the sweetness of the sugar pumpkins. Those are the same ones that you use when you're making like pumpkin pie and stuff. Okay, so we're getting there here. I'm almost done. Just going to get this last little bit here. And if you're taking more time than me, no worries at all. You can always pause this video. You don't have to keep up. That's the joys of video. <laughs> There's a pause. That's the best part. So I've got most of the skin off. I'm just going to chuck it in here for now before I compost. And then I've missed a little bit at the end. You can kind of see here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that off and then I'm going to cut it in half. So this makes cutting it in half so much easier. You don't need a lot of muscles or a really big cleaver or something like that. So I'm just cutting it in half or cutting off the little bits that I missed. And then I'm going to put it end to end and cut in half. Now, this can be a little bit tricky, but don't worry. If yours is small, it shouldn't be too bad. You just kind of put your knife here and make sure your fingers are well out of the way and cut down. I kind of like seesaw it and rock it. And then once you hit the part with the seeds, it'll go really, really quickly. So please make sure your fingers are out of the way. And this is what it looks like. Delicious. Now we're going to scoop out our seeds. Now I absolutely love uh, butternut squash seeds, so I'm actually going to save them and we'll do something, well, I'll do something with them later. So I'm just going to make sure all these seeds come out. If you can get them like, kind of like go like this, you don't have to get as much of the goo because you definitely don't want to roast the goo. But for the interest of time and the soup, I'm just going to scoop them out. So I like to use a spoon to do that. 
And then later on, I will remove all of the goo. And what I like to do with my seeds when I'm doing pumpkin seeds, butternut squash seeds, whatever kind of seeds, is I really like to boil them first before roasting them. Because I find it makes them so much more digestible and it actually makes them crispier. So I've actually done a really good job here. I've been able to get most of my seeds out without any of the goo, which is awesome, but that means I have a ton of goo in here that's not really scooping out properly. So I'm just gonna cut this off. So we have our nice chunk here. And then I'm gonna cut the goo out because it's just not coming. So when I say goo, I just mean like the stuff holding the seeds. So I'm gonna just cut on an angle and try to cut that goo out because we don't really want that in our soup. It's not gonna add a very nice texture, not ideal. And then once you start cutting, you can kind of scrape it out a little bit better. If you have like a great like sharp spoon, it'll come a lot easier, but there. So this is my goo. Now you don't have to throw this away. This actually works really well in flavoring your vegetable stocks and stuff like that. So you may wanna set it aside and you can use it later because who loves, who likes waste, right? We wanna save as much as we can. So then I'm gonna do the other side. So as I was saying with these seeds, I'm just kind of like gently scraping them into this bowl. Then I'm gonna boil them for about 20 minutes to increase digestibility and to make sure that when I roast them, they're super crispy. Now, if you're just doing a small butternut squash versus a huge pumpkin, you may want to just pan roast them, pan fry them, because you may not wanna turn on your oven just for like a couple seeds. But if you're doing this recipe fully, which is meaning that you're gonna roast the whole vegetables before making them into a soup, then you could roast these seeds at the same time. So this one actually didn't have a whole lot of goo. I don't know, the other one was gooier. Now I'm gonna use whoops, my spoon here to really scrape out whatever goo is left and I'm really digging in. So the last time I used a knife, this time I'm using a spoon. Both really great ways to get the goo, technical term, the goo out of your butternut squash. I didn't have very much left over and I'm gonna save that for later and I'll explain what I'm gonna use that for. So now I'm just gonna dice this up roughly. I don't wanna do it too big because then it'll take longer to cook. I'm gonna go like two centimeters cubed about. Metric, what is that, a third of an inch maybe? I don't know. The bigger you have the chunks, the longer it's gonna take to cook. So if you do nice small chunks, it'll cook a lot faster. And the best part about this recipe is that we're gonna puree it. So we don't really have to worry so much about how perfect our cut, like knife skills and cuts are because we're gonna cook it up and we're gonna puree it. So it makes it so, so simple. So easy, no fuss, no muss. So I have some like big chunks. Like this is like the biggest one here. You can get a feel for size. You don't wanna go any bigger than that because then it's gonna take forever to cook. And yeah, we're just chopping it up. Now, similar to pumpkin, butternut squash has a lot of really great health properties. Again, similar to pumpkin, it's really high in beta carotene. So whenever you see something that's this brilliant, brilliant orange, think beta carotene. And what that is, is that it is a phytonutrient that's gonna transform into vitamin A in the body. And vitamin A is definitely a vitamin you want lots of in your diet because it's great for eye health. If you have people in your family that suffer from cataracts or glaucoma or any of those like big eye problems, then eating vitamin A in your diet is gonna be a really good thing to do to prevent those eye issues happening to you. On top of that, it's really great for just in general eye health. If you have trouble seeing in the dark, vitamin A helps with that. They always tell kids that carrots help you see in the dark. And that is because of the vitamin A content. All right, so I'm almost done here. And all I'm doing with this, we're throwing everything in at the same time. So I'm just throwing these into a big bowl. So all of the ingredients will go in this big bowl and then we'll just dump them in the pot. Same would be if you were going to be roasting this. You dump them all in the bowl and then later well, we would toss them, roast them, and then put them in the oven. Or yeah, in the oven. All right, so I have some rogue seeds here. I'm just kind of collecting them because they're all over my celery. So I really want them to go into my soup there for later. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is celery. So I have four celery stalks here. I've already washed them, but if you haven't, then go ahead and wash yours. And I'm gonna start by just cutting off the tips. I find these get like browned because they're sitting in the grocery store. 
Again, don't throw them out. These make a really great stock. What I like to do, instead of having to buy vegetables when I make veggie stock, is I save all of these little ends in a bag in the freezer. So then when it's time to make stock, all I have to do is go to my freezer and pull it out. And then I don't have to buy extra celery, onions, peppers, whatever else to flavor my stock because I have all these odds and ends that would normally be garbage anyway. So now I'm going to roughly dice the celery. Now you don't have to do it very small because it is pretty big. So here you go. This is kind of like what you're looking for in terms of size. And again, we're just going to dice this up real quick and throw it into the big communal bowl of goodness. It's delicious. Now we'll do our garlic. I have two garlic cloves here. There we go. <laughs> and what I like to do with my garlic cloves is I like to put them one at a time on their side, put the flat edge of the knife on the clove, and then pound it with my palm or with my fist. And that makes it really easy to peel off the skin because, or it's almost skin, it's so translucent -y. But it makes it really easy to do that. You don't have to struggle to peel it. So palm on, push, or bang, there you go. Super, super easy. And it kind of helps the cutting process because it like dices it a little bit. And then you just want to lightly chop or mince. Now for this one, we don't need it super fine because again, the soup is getting pureed. I love pureed soups because you can be so lazy with your chopping. So I'm just doing like, I don't know, I'd say a fine dice here. I'll just run my knife through it a little bit. I'm not mincing. When you're mincing, you want it to be really small. So this is like pretty chunky because we're gonna puree it so it doesn't have to be like super small because we're not gonna be getting these like huge chunks of garlic in everything. So I'm just gonna do this a little bit more. I think that's good. Oh, it smells awesome. I love garlic. And I'm just gonna put it in here. Garlic is so good for your health. It has awesome immune boosting properties. Just amazing. Really good for cold and flu season. And I have like an orange hand here, so I'm just gonna rinse this off because it's, I don't know, it looks really weird. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, so there's that. So if your hands turn orange, wipe them off. Next, we're gonna do one small red onion. Now this is not a small red onion. So I'm only gonna do half of it and cross my fingers that I don't cry. You could do, if you have a small one, you would just do a small one. But this one's so big, I'm just gonna do half. And again, super easy. We're not, we're pureeing. We're not gonna eat this as it is. So we don't have to be super meticulous in our chopping. We're just kinda gonna dice it up. Roughly about the same size as like the celery. You'll see. So since I'm doing half, I'm just gonna cut it in half first. And oh, getting through the little core is hard to do. I like to cut it with this little core intact because that way it kind of stays together as I'm dicing. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside. Hopefully it won't make me cry later. And then I'm keeping the little end bit on, saving this little piece that fell off, because we'll eat that. And then I'm going to run my knife through it. So I'm gonna cut, um, I don't know, maybe in three cuts. So cut it into four slices this way. And then I'm gonna just do a very rough dice. So huge, chunky red onion. And I love red onion because the redness means antioxidants and phytonutrients that are gonna be really great for our health. So they're really nice. And this little butt here that I have left over, saving that again, adding it to my leftover veggie bowl to use next time I make stock. So I'm gonna throw that in. I'm not really worrying about separating the pieces right now because they're going to separate naturally in the soup, so I'm not too worried. The last thing we're doing is our leeks. Now I leave these for last because leeks are like the dirtiest vegetable ever. There is so much dirt hiding between all of these leaves. It's outrageous. And I find it's kind of, there's no point trying to get it out before you cut it up because you really have to get in there. And like the dirt like goes down really deep. So that's why I do it last, because I don't want to get my cutting board full of dirt. So I'm going to dice these ones up. The ends are a little bit, again, stale, so I like to do a fresh cut. These bits, so dirty already. I'm going to rinse before adding to my leftover butt bag, because they're, it's so sandy. And then I'm just going to cut them up, and I'm going to put them in this colander that I have here. And then we're going to really spend some time washing these, like 
Can you guys see this? Like that's all dirt. It's outrageous. So much, so much dirt. Like these are just the dirtiest veggies. And it's so gross if you don't clean them properly because then you end up getting like dirt granules in your soup and that's just not appealing. There's no way you can look at that to make that appealing. So I'm gonna cut it most of the way down. When I get to about here, I usually stop and these also, ooh, strong, I feel my eyes now. We'll go in my ends, odds and ends bag. So now I'm gonna put them in this colander and I'm gonna make sure they're separated because if there's any pieces within pieces, the dirt will be hiding there and then we'll have a gritty kind of gross soup. So spend some time really pulling these apart so that there's no little dirty bits hiding because trust me, you do not want that. I love leeks because now they're available all year round and they add a really nice flavor to your soups. They're a lot sweeter than onions and they're not as astringent. So they're really nice just on their own, but I think they add a really nice element to the soup. Now, since we're not roasting, oh my gosh, my eyes, I'm gonna be like bawling over here soon, guys. I know there's all of these tricks for not having this happen, but I find none of them work on me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just keeping on doing this. I kind of bring this closer so you guys can see a little bit better. How I'm just like, look, how, it's like so dirty bringing these apart. I have like muddy fingers now from these crazy, crazy leaks. So I'm really making sure that there's no little bits where dirt can hide. And then we're gonna do such a good job cleaning these because the dirt is just not good. Oh my gosh, you know what? I can go like side to side. I got a little system going. If you guys can see that, pull one side, pull the other side, pull one side, pull the other side. See what I'm doing there? It's working really well. Kind of rotates which side the leaves on. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I've never done this before. Huh? It's a really nice way to separate. So when you get into these like really inner ones, they might not be as bad, but I still like to separate it because it's gonna make sure everything cooks at the same speed. So these ones are not so dirty when it's like super, super tight. And then you can see on the transition one, there's still dirt. Like this was like almost all the way down. It's crazy, 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 crazy. My hands are like muddy. Oh my gosh, I'm still getting lots of dirt. I'm almost done. Hopefully you guys are too. Of course, if I'm faster than you, don't worry about it. Just hit pause. That's why we're videos. It makes it so much easier. Oh my gosh, and you guys get to see me cry. These onions and these leeks are getting to me. All right, so that's pretty good. I think I've got most of them separated, especially all the dirty ones. And now I'm gonna spend some time really washing out this dirt. So I like to use cold water here. I don't wanna use some hot water because that will just start cooking them already and we don't need to do that. And really spend some time like grabbing pieces, rinsing them, getting the dirt out of them. Like you don't want to rush this because if you do, actually I think I might put this one. No, it's too splashy. If you do, you'll get gritty, gritty soup. So you just want to like take your time rinsing, making sure you splash all of that dirt out of there, making sure these leeks are delicious. And then once this is done, our prep is done, so that's like so good. We're pretty much getting there. Okay, I'll get my head back in the screen. I'm just really going to make sure that I get all of these dirty bits out. Isn't that from like a song? Dirty bit? Yeah, I think it's like Black Eyed Peas or something. Or maybe it's something totally different and it's like something that I made up because that's also entirely possible. I like never know the lyrics to songs. Okay. I think my leeks are actually looking pretty good. I don't see any more like dirty little sections. So I think, I think I've got it all. I'm gonna give it one more spin. I'm just bringing the log roller right in there with me, really getting it in there just to make sure I'm pushing away any little bits because leeks are the worst. Definitely the worst, okay. Good, I'll dry off my hands. And now my friends, it is time to start cooking. So you wanna get out a nice big pot and we're gonna turn our heat to medium low. For this recipe, I cook with olive oil. So it's really important when working with olive oil not to heat it too high. Because if you heat it too high, it goes rancid. And we don't want that. That's gonna actually add damage to our body and we're gonna lose all of the health benefits of olive oil. So I do a medium low and then I'm going to add one, about one tablespoon of olive oil, but I'm going to eyeball it because 
that's just how I roll. I probably added more than a tablespoon. But just enough so that you can sprinkle it in and then I'm just gonna use my spoon here just to make sure the whole base is covered. Now this recipe, again, really easy, no muss, no fuss. We're doing the shortcut. If you were doing the long version where you roast the veggies, you'd have your oven to 400 degrees. You would take this beautiful, colorful bowl of veggies and you would add the olive oil, all the spices, which we're gonna add to the pot, give it a nice big toss, onions, and the leeks, we have those in there. Give it a nice big toss and then we're gonna roast it for 20 minutes on 400. But today, since we're doing the time-saving version, we're just gonna dump this right into our big, big pot. Now this makes a pretty big soup, so you actually do need to make sure you have a big pot to fit everything in. And then I'm also gonna add my leeks. Like, this pot is overflowing. So make sure you have a nice big one. And it will cook down, especially the leeks. They definitely cook down quite a bit. So now that it's all in there, it is time to add our spices. We gotta spice it up, spice up our lives. Spices are such a great way to add extra flavor to any recipe without adding any calories or any salt or any weird MSG chemical-y things like that. So I'm gonna start by adding cloves. I love cloves. About a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm gonna eyeball it. Cloves are kind of that signature, almost like, it reminds me of like a chai spice. They're really cool though. They actually have analgesic properties. So if you have a toothache, you can chew on a big clove, not the ground clove, but a big one, and it'll help with your toothache. So cool. The other one I'm adding is cinnamon. Love cinnamon. Same thing, quarter uh, teaspoon eyeballing it. Cinnamon is really great because it helps balance your blood sugar. Then I'm adding dried rosemary, same amount, delicious. And I'm gonna add thyme as well, same amount. Oh, I love all, the, this recipe is so spicy, like not hot spicy, but like a lot of spices in it spicy, I love it. Then we're gonna add ground ginger. I, oh, I love ginger, it's one of my favorite ones. Only an eighth of a teaspoon though, because it is quite strong. You could also use fresh. If you're using fresh, then you would do a quarter of a teaspoon. And nutmeg, not too much, same amount as the ginger, just a quarter, or sorry, an eighth of a teaspoon. And then finally, we're gonna add two bay leaves. Now these are something we're gonna take out before we blend, and they just add, they leave behind a really nice kind of savory, soupy, yummy flavor. So I've thrown those in. And now I really like to stir it up while the spices are in there without adding the broth, just to make sure everything's nice and coated. Now, easier said than done, because this pot is like overflowing, so I'm really gonna go careful here as I slowly give it a nice stir to make sure that the spices are getting everywhere. Now, of course, they're still going to because we're, uh, <laughs> we're adding everything and cooking it together, but I just kinda like to stir it first just to make sure everything's evenly distributed. Next up, we're adding our stock. Now, usually I make my own stock because I love, love stock. But sometimes we just run out of time. So I'm just gonna use a pre-made organic vegetable broth today. But you need about six cups. So for me, it's this whole thing. It may not cover everything, but that is okay because everything's gonna cook down, especially the leeks. The leeks right now are taking up a ton of real estate, but they're gonna almost like, be a third of that size once they start loosening up and cooking. So I've added this whole carton. Now I'm gonna add some maple syrup. I love maple syrup in this because it just adds a really nice sweetness. We're not doing too much. I think it's just a quarter cup. I can double check that. And you guys have the recipe anyways. It's on page 10 of Healing Herbs and Spices. So I'm just drizzling that on. It's gonna bring out a nice sweetness, especially since we're using like cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger. I just love the combination there. So I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. And the last thing you're gonna add here is salt and pepper. But before we do that, I'm gonna turn it on high. Because what we wanna do is we actually wanna bring this to a boil and then lower the heat and simmer. And we're gonna simmer for about 30 minutes or until our butternut squash is cooked through and nice and soft. So I've just added some salt and some pepper. And of course, we're gonna taste it afterwards uh, once we puree to make sure that we like the salt and pepper and we can always add more. All right, so that's pretty good there. Give it another little stir to make sure everything's getting in there. And since these uh, leeks are gonna cook down, we kind of wanna keep on stirring the whole time. 
All right, so I'm gonna put this aside now and put the top on because it'll heat up much faster with the top on there. So that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. This is such a quick one. We just kind of throw it all together in the pot, let it cook for half an hour, and then you've got a soup. The one step you need to do afterwards that we're not gonna do live because you guys don't need to watch me puree and hang out for 20 minutes, is you're gonna puree it. So once it's cooked, once you can stick a fork, I should change back to the big view. Once you can stick a fork in the butternut squash and it is really soft, it just goes in very easily, almost like a mashed potato consistency before you mash the potatoes. Once you get to that point, then you can puree. There's two ways to do this. One, the most convenient is with an immersion blender. So then you're just blending it right in the pot, way less dishes, so easy to do. Heat it back up to a nice heat to eat and you're good to go. If you don't have an immersion blender, then you have to get a little creative with your blender. So you're gonna need a big bowl and a blender. And what you'll do is you'll take, ladle the soup out of the pot into your blender until it's at its capacity because you don't wanna overfill it or else Woo, surprise, soup everywhere. So you wanna blend it in your blender and then once it's pureed, add it to the big bowl. And then do the next batch. Put it in the blender, blend it, once it's pureed, big bowl. And then eventually your bowl will be filled with pureed stuff and you'll just put it back in your pot, heat it up and you'll be good to go. And that's all there is to it. So much easier with an immersion blender but also works really well with a like blender back and forth pot thing. What else did I want to say? I think that was it for the soup. We talked about later once it's cooked, you can decorate it with these pumpkin seeds. You're gonna boil them for 20 minutes and then I like them since there's so few here, I roast them on a frying pan with olive oil, salt and pepper until they get golden. So that takes about 10 minutes and you wanna kinda of keep an eye on them because you don't want them to burn. And then you can serve them with those on top. You can see there's an image there. Oh, it just went away. So on the side, there's some images of other soups in my cookbook filtering, and there's one of a butternut squash soup with the seeds on top, and it just looks really pretty. So if you guys like this recipe, which I hope you do, because it's one of my favorites, then you will love the recipes in my cookbook. So here it is, it is out, I am super excited. It's called Healthy Homemade Soups and Sandwiches. It has over 30 delicious, soup and sandwich recipes. I mean, look at these. They're so good, bright, vibrant, healthy. I love them. And then there's lots of great info in there as well that I've added. So not only do you get recipes, but you get really great info. And this recipe is in here, made with pumpkin, of course. And it's also in the free ebook. So if you don't have this recipe, go to jessielanewellness.com slash freebies and download healing herbs and spices. And the recipe for what we just made is on page 10. And if you already have that and you want more, you can check out my cookbook, Healthy Homemade Soups and Sandwiches. It's available both in print, which is what I have here, and in digital format. So you can get both of those on my website, jessielanewellness.com slash ebooks. And then the first one there is this one, and you can learn more. And yes, it is print and ebook format, so you can choose between both. This one right now is available on Amazon.com, but soon it should be available on Amazon.ca and the UK version and the Europe version as well. So you should be able to order it anywhere in the world, and it actually delivers and prints quite quickly, which I love. And it's just so good. This is one of my favorites, this curry lentil soup. I mean, how good does that look? Oh, look, and it's on the picture slide right now. So you can see as we've gone through the video on the side, all of these delicious soups have shown up. So that's all for tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy your soup. I hear mine boiling, so I'm just gonna turn it down because I don't wanna boil it the whole time. We wanna simmer. So if you're cooking live with me, go turn your soup down because you're probably already at boil. And you're just gonna let that simmer for 30 minutes. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous evening and I really hope you enjoyed making this delicious roasted pumpkin soup. But we didn't roast it and we didn't add butternut squash. Still really, really great for winter. It's gonna warm you up from the inside out and it contains lots of delicious healing herbs and spices. If you guys like this video, I would be so grateful if you could right now give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody you know who really likes soups because they're gonna love this one. 
Also feel free to ask any questions you have in the comment section. I will be monitoring that and I will answer all of your questions right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great night and I'm sending you love, peace, and healthy eats. Bye guys.